welcome to Raglan Electric Baboon's Lair. And what have we got in the workshop today? Kind of looks like a leaf battery case. Looks like the little one. Those of you who are geeks might be a bit confused by this lump. That's because this isn't any old Nissan leaf battery. It's a 60 kilowatt hour. And if the lid's here, that can only mean that we've got the rest of it here topless. So, what do we know about this? Well, I knew very little until I'd got my hands on one. What I'd heard is that the battery case is the same size, and it, I think it is basically the same floor area. You know, it, it looks much the same, that length and width. But if you notice here, you've got this step up on the support, and also here on the front mounts. So on the normal leaf battery, that there, that mounting point is here. So essentially this battery hangs down that much more. So that's about an inch or about yeah, one, two, three, four, five. It doesn't really make sense in whole mod numbers, but about that much more in terms of batteries. So the battery is actually lower in the car, um, which is interesting. I don't know if that means the suspension is set higher or if the car's got less ground clearance. I haven't actually checked that out yet. What I have noticed is some quality issues. The top is glued on, but there's rust trying to climb its way under the glue. I'm guessing that was damage when preparing the surface for gluing at the factory. Who knows? You can also see here that they start and end their bead here, so they probably run around that way and come back with their glue and do a big overlap here. But you don't care about that. You care about this. So what's inside? All the modules are flat by the looks of it, and they are four that way, four that way. Terminals pointing in towards the middle. So terminal that way, terminal that way, terminal that way, terminal that way. And we've got our main breaker assembly here, so it's a different orientation to the other versions. So these are the plus and minus out which means that these must be the plus and minus from the battery side before the contactors. And they go in there, down this stack of cells, along down this stack of cells, out to here, up, down, along. And then I think through here. No, it splits in there, so it's I think it's one-sided. I think it's just this side comes all through here. Then halfway along this lot goes there through the breaker, which is in the reverse orientation to the other batteries, the 24s, 30s, and 40s, because the arrow on that isolator points towards the back, whereas normally an arrow points towards the front of a vehicle. Anyway, so it goes through there, comes out, and then does the same on the other side. Now, I couldn't tell you how many modules there are and what um, what the wiring arrangement is in here because I'm not actually taking this apart. I'm doing a little balance job on it. Yep, the, the baboon is getting paid. This is very unusual. Um, and then I'm putting it back together, so I'm not going too deep in there. What I will point out, they've crammed the cells in so much, I mean, that the BMS has to go on top. Normally the BMS sits out on the side here. And that's what I will say is that these, there's so much less free space in here than in the old Nissan Leaf packs, which kind of, it's amazing they took so long about doing that. And actually looking at the way the lid is laid out, they've got high space here to clear that. So they've got all of this empty as well. So they still haven't maximized it. But yeah, there you go. That is what's inside a 62 kilowatt hour Leaf. I would call this an unboxing rather than a teardown because I haven't torn it down. Um, but you do get to see a little bit of the structure in here. Um, if I'm going to keep blathering on for a bit. Are these the same spacing as a standard leaf, the bolt holes? I think so, but I don't know so. It would make sense from the point of view of not retooling the entire factory. Um, what I will say 
is that there is a really nasty smell coming out of this. Um, even though it's a horrible day today, I've got that door open and that door open to let some throughput of air. And when I came into work here on this this morning, I was actually wearing my respirator because, yeah, it's not like the normal leaf sort of chewing gummy smell. It's more of a, a headache smell, a bit, a bit like glue, a bit like epoxy. Yeah, not nice, that's for sure. So, yeah, um, what else to say? Oh, what else to say is that the wiring on the data port is close enough to the Gen 2 that I can use my Gen 2 connector and loom to connect to LeafSpy via an OBD2 and power, of course. Um, same goes for the BMS. I actually plugged a G2 BMS in there and got it to fire up. I got some very strange voltage readings, but at least I proved that I wasn't putting the wrong voltage in the wrong thing before... Um, before risking the 62 kilowatt hour unobtainium BMS. I think the BMS is very similar to a 40 kilowatt hour one. It looks similar-ish, but it's actually quite different to the 30 and the 24 kilowatt hour BMSs. Maybe another video on that when I am not on a time pressure to get a battery done for a customer. Um, and I think that's all I have for you. Maybe a sneak preview, something I should have featured ages ago, I haven't got around to it, is this fantastic upgrade to my nuke-proof full suspension beast of a mountain bike. We now have a 72 volt system, 36 volts, 36 volts, Grin phase runner, currently set to 2 kilowatts. It's awesome, it's a beast. Um, yeah, so I will leave you at that. I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, Write them somewhere down there with insulated girl love so that you're safe. Um, and if they're not too irritating and I'm in the right mood, I might even try and answer them helpfully. All right. Thanks for your time. Have a wonderful evening, morning, afternoon, life, whatever. See ya.